Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, students. Uh, this is Mr. Holmes here. I'm going to talk to you about the element of art this week. We are focusing in on color. The color wheel is a means of organizing colors of the spectrum. That's right. All the colors, all the time. Here we go. Here is an example of a, of a very basic color wheel. We're going to talk about what these words mean in a second here, like tertiary, secondary, primary. Well, you might know what a primary color is. You probably do. You know, you probably know what a secondary color is too. But we're going to do a deeper dive on the technicalities behind each of these and go into color theory a little bit here for us. Primary colors. Hold on to your hats, everybody. All colors are made from mixing the primary colors together. That's right. Every single one is from these colors, red, blue, and yellow. They're like our keystone colors. They're so important. A secondary color are produced from mixing the primary colors. But you might be like, Mr. Holmes, you just said all colors are made from primary colors. So what makes secondary colors special? Well, they're mixed literally with only the primary colors. So we t look at orange, violet, and green. Let's take a step back here. We had red, blue, and yellow, right? You're going to mix red and yellow together. You're going to get orange so on and so forth okay so that's how, what we mean by secondary colors they're very primal in nature but they're not primary intermediate colors all right they're also called tertiary colors i want to go ahead and kind of use those two words interchangeably here uh, they're produced by mixing a primary and a secondary color together okay so if we look at our beautiful chart here we see orange I'm not sure if I can do this without clicking through. Oh, no. Okay. So we see orange on the left side of your screen and then reds at the top. We mix them together and you get an orange red. All right. At the very southern point of your screen, you see the letter G for green. To uh, the left of that, you see a Y for yellow. You mix yellow and green together. You get an intermediate color or a tertiary color. Yellow, green, lime, green. You know, they're going to have multiple words for these colors here and so on and so forth. But there are some colors that don't exist on this wheel. How does that happen? Well, they're neutral colors, all right? They're not part of the color wheel. Uh, that's going to be your blacks, your gray, your white, and brown. Color temperature. Can color have temperatures? Absolutely they can. Warm colors. What do we think of we think of warm colors? Red, yellows, oranges. These colors are going to move forward and really stand out in your art piece. Uh, they're going to elicit a sense of warmth and belonging and comfort or intensity. If you do striking reds or slashes of yellow and orange across your piece, it's going to draw out a lot of drama. Whoop. Whereas cool colors, they move backwards into your piece. They're your blues, your violets, your greens. They're going to fade away into the background. They're going to recede from the viewer's attention. Uh, so if you have a lot of contrasting colors, if you have reds against blues, it's going to stand out very strong and the colors are going to really pop off your art piece. All right. What are some properties of colors? Well, we have the hue. What's the hue? It's the actual color or another name for the color. So the hue of red is red, right? Intensity. That's the brightness or the dullness of the color. How can a color be intense? Well, we look at this little scale here. Uh, we can see a high intensity color. It's going to have less of its complement mixed in with it, or less gray added, or less black added. It's going to be more pure. We see this bright orange on the right on the top of the scale. If you add blue to it, it's going to get less intense. What's value? Value is the darkness or lightness of a color, which we talked about previously, right? We learned about value scales. And then a shade. Uh, you can add black to a color to darken it. It's going to create a shade of it. And then the opposite side of a shade is a tint. A tint is when you add white to a color to lighten it. So we take this base color here. We're going to keep adding white to keep lightening it. So we're creating tints of this color here. Now here's a different visual graph for y'all to understand hue, intensity, and value a little bit better. On the left of this graph, it's 0% uh, for intensity and value. 
And on the right side, 100%. So the value line says, all right, if it's very dark, it's all on the left here. And if it's high value, it's, it's pretty white, pretty washed out. Then it tends to do the same thing, right? So the more gray or con uh, complementary color is added to your hue, the less intense the color is going to be. And the more intense, the brighter the color. And then hue, again, is just a different word for uh, color. Hope you all enjoyed learning about color this week. We will do a deeper dive or another deep dive into the second part of color next week. So get excited for that. This color lecture is really going to help you out with the project this week. Uh, you're going to use it uh, to create your own digital color wheel, okay? So make sure you have this for reference as you go through and complete your project. And, of course, this is the lecture that you will use to complete your notes for the week as well. But you guys are experts at that by now. Uh, thanks for doing a great job, everybody. And I'm going to see you in person next week. So excited, guys and gals. Talk to you real soon.